In this part of the presentation, we will demonstrate the capabilities of some of our SAP read tools. All right, so let's take a look at some of the SAP read tools. So this here is Altrix Designer, and once you've installed the ACS for Altrix Designer, this folder, this SAP read tools folder, will appear on your menu bar. And within that folder, you can see here a whole range of different read tools that could be available to you. Um, for our purposes, I'll take a look at the SAP table data tool, which is all about extracting data from those SAP tables and views. We'll take a look at the SAP report tool, which allows you to pull data from SAP transaction codes, T codes, and ABAP reports. We'll take a look at the SAP BW read tool, which allows us to extract data from BW queries, query views, as well as info providers. We'll also take a look at the SAP document read tool, which is a tool used to pull extract uh, attachments uh, from the master data and transactional data objects within uh, the SAP system. And to finish things off, we'll take a look at the SAP BAPI read tool, in which case here we're going to use this to extract uh, data via, via BAPI into Alteryx. So um, we have a number of workflows I've already laid out here uh, to show you. Um, this is quite a commonly used one. It's a very common use case as well amongst a lot of our users. It's where we want to be able to extract financial uh, data from the underlying SAP system. So in this particular scenario, we're pulling GL accounting data directly from the SAP tables themselves. So there are, as you can imagine, quite a large number of tables associated with financial transactions in an SAP system. But there are two primary tables, two main tables. One of these is a table called BKPF, which is the accounting document header table. And the other one is called BSEG, B-S-E-G, which is the accounting document segment table. And if we can extract data from both of those tables and join that data together, then effectively we can reconstruct our financial posting documents within Alteryx. So the primary tool of ours that we're using here is the SAP table data tool. And if I show you the workflow, how it strings out, get a sense of it, you can see here that we have one of our logon tools. So our logon tool uh, basically stores the information about the SAP system that we want to connect to and passes our credentials through to the other tools in the workflow. Linked to this particular uh, logon tool, I have a table data tool. And this table data tool is going to be extracting data from the BKPF accounting document header table. And I can simply um, run a search for that particular table, or I can specify the table manually if I know what it is. And we have different features to help you find both the table you're looking for, as well as any tables associated uh, with that particular table. So once the table has been selected, uh, we do a direct read of the SAP system, and we retrieve all the metadata associated with that particular table into this selection window within the parameters tab. And what we're retrieving here is both a list of all the standard SAP fields associated with that particular table, as well as any custom fields uh, that your company may have defined. And you can see here, you've got quite a few uh, field, field, fields here. We also have the ability to have the descriptive name as well as the, the technical name of the field. And what the user simply does is they select the various fields that they're interested in. Okay, uh, we also have the ability to apply filters to that data so we can really refine uh, the data that's going to be selected. In this scenario here, we've applied just a basic filter on the fiscal year. So we're running the pool data from the selected fields for fiscal year 2019. Okay, so when that um, particular workflow is run, then we do a direct read of that table and the data is retrieved and pulled into Alteryx. And you can see here, I've previously run this particular workflow. Here we can see in the bottom part of the screen here, that table output directly. Okay. Then this particular workflow has, has two branches. Uh, the top branch here, what we're doing is we're, we're sending the data extracted from that header level data table, and we're passing it here to this Alteryx join tool. And in the bottom branch is we're using what we call our ACS filter tool and a workflow. And within this workflow, it's encapsulated is a workflow encapsulated in a macro. So that particular workflow um, is looking for data from the BSEG table, the item level table, 
associated with the financial documents. And what we do with this second branch here is we use this thing called our ACS filter tool to drip feed the output we retrieved from this table and pass it into the workflow searching for data from the item level table. So effectively what we're doing is something called a, a dynamic input. We are using the output from one table as an input into the other table. So when the workflow runs and the output appears at this side of the workflow, we get the data associated with the BSEG table, but it's only that data, the only data we're extracting is the data that's relevant to the inputs provided through this table here. Okay. We then use the Altrix join tool um, to make a link between the common keys and both, and both tables. And then if we just move slightly further along, in this using this Altrix browse tool here, I can now see the combined result of the header level table and the item level table. So here effectively I have reconstructed uh, that financial document or those financial documents. And then using these tools here, these are these are all Altrix tools, I can work a little bit of magic and just convert the, the technical names which we extract into uh, the descriptive names to make it a little bit more meaningful to the user. Okay, now here we're extracting data from financial tables. It doesn't matter whether it's purchasing, sales, materials management, in which amount, it doesn't matter. Uh, the essential technique and capabilities uh, are the same. And by using this macro kind of concept within our workflows, by wrapping a workflow into a macro and drip feeding data into it from another component in this case here our table data tool, we're able to pull massive volumes of data from those SAP systems. So that's one example. Next example is the use of our SAP report tool. Okay, so uh, what we've got here again is a predefined workflow. Uh, transaction MB51 will be familiar to a large number of you. This is an inventory management uh, transaction code which presents a material document list. So let me just firstly show you the output that we get from this. So this is kind of what the output we get. We, we get the extract from this particular transaction directly presented in a flat tabular format. And if I just flip to my SAP system here, this is, you can see here, transaction MB51. And the output from the standard transaction is basically presented in exactly the same way as we have it here. All right. So what do we do? So the potential little bit of work you need to do just to um, tidy up the initial output from the SAP transaction code. Unlike tables, transaction codes uh, may have slightly different outputs according to which development team originally produced uh, the transaction many, many years ago. So here you can see I've specified the particular transaction code I'm interested in. I could also select the report associated with it. So this is the ABAP report associated with that transaction code. Uh, when I select the particular uh, transaction code, the system goes away and it retrieves the underlying report name. Now we have one or two choices. Okay, We can either uh, make use of the selection screen that we have represented here. So this is the selection screen and this is similar to the selection screen you'll see if you were to execute the transaction directly within the SAP environment or we can reference a particular transaction variant. Okay, so we can either use a transaction variant or complete our own selection criteria in this particular filter screen here. The other thing we're able to do, and in some scenarios it's quite necessary for us to do, excuse me, is just to tidy up the data. So maybe we'll have headers with multiple rows, uh, maybe there'll be fields, outline, and so we have within the, the, the tool itself uh, the ability to define um, where the header row starts, um, where we should represent fields other the header fields, where we should ignore fields. So we have quite the ability to clean up the data uh, before we actually run the extracts out through into Altrix. So that's the SAP report tool. Here we have an example of the SAP BW read tool. Um, and the SAP BW read tool, general principles are the same. Uh, here we're not searching for T codes, we're not searching for tables, we have the ability uh, to search for the various queries, um, info providers that we have available in the system. This is just showing me history here. 
um, I can also do basic searches uh, for that particular data, okay, based upon data we have within the particular system. Uh, once you've selected the, the query, in this case it's a query we've selected here, again that metadata is retrieved from the SAP VW system, um, and then we see all the characteristics, associated key figures uh, associated with that particular query. Uh, the pre-selected fields match to the settings within the BW system. All right, so what's quite nice here is that if there are particular maybe characteristics I don't need to see or there are characteristics that are missing for my purposes, I can add them here to my, to my output just by selecting them. What we also do is highlight any of the, uh, the filters and variables that uh, can be populated or may need to be populated uh, by the user before they can successfully execute the report and these are all color coded all right so the green ones here indicate that i've fulfilled the uh the the, the selection criteria that is required by the particular uh, particular query in order to run it and then when we execute the query um, we have three possible outputs so the first output from this one here is the data itself okay so we see the various characteristics and key figures associated with that particular SAP VW query. So that's the, the D output there. The H output is interesting because what we're able to do using the tool is to associate, um, sorry, to extract the hierarchy data associated with the, the, the query um, into Altrix as well. And what we're also able to do is if there's maybe multiple different types of hierarchy associated with the query, we can select specifically which of those hierarchies that we'd like to extract. And the hierarchy is always extracted in a flat tabular format. Okay, so nice, easy way to pull that data. And then the middle output here, the T port, allows us to choose which types of text objects associated with the query uh, that we'd like to extract as well. A lot of capability, um, and if you use BW, uh, this is a really great tool to use. Okay, so the next one on the list I want to show you is one of our other tools. Um, and this is a scenario whereby we want to use our SAP document tool to extract the attachments associated with a, a, a given transaction uh, in the system. So this one here, again, this is a, one of our predefined workflows. Um, where we're using our SAP document read tool here. Um, I'm also using our table data tool uh, to select data from the source table where I want to identify whether there is an attachment and then it gets passed through into this particular tool here and again using some Altrix magic we're able to convert the table the data extracted from the SAP document read tool into its original format. So what do I mean by that? If we go to my SAP system um, and here there's a particular uh, notification, so a plant maintenance uh, transaction in the uh, SAP system. And against this particular transaction, there is quite a list of attachments. Okay, zip files, word files, RTFs, a lot of the MIME types supported by the SAP system. So let's take a look at, say, um, maybe this one here. Just open it up. Okay, so this is the one, an image file associated with that particular uh, notification transaction. They're all the same, I won't open these, but all these are, all have uh, their own attachments. So what I'm able to do uh, using the document read tool is I can identify the various notifications. You may recognize this number here from the screen I've just shown you. So we're searching for a whole range of notifications to see whether there are attachments associated with them and then through the execution of the workflow we identify that there are a number of attachments for that particular uh, transaction in the SAP system and then we come through our particular tools okay and we can see that there's the documents associated here and finally, as the workflow progresses, we do this right to disk. Now, if I just click on the canvas of my workflow here, 
because I haven't specifically stored it anywhere, you can see that we have a whole range of files that have extracted as part of this particular workflow. And if I click on the um, JP, yeah, JPG one, that's the file. All right. So using this tool, I'm able to extract those attachments, those documents attached to master data and transactional data objects within the SAP system itself. Really, really handy tool. Okay, and the final one just to show you to finish off here is let's take a look at uh, the BAPI tool uh, being used. Uh, this is a very powerful tool. There are a lot of BAPIs available in the standard uh, SAP system, and you may have even defined um, custom BAPIs or RFC enabled function modules within your environment. So, similar capabilities to other tools that work in similar ways, although the, the configuration may be slightly different. So this one here, I've run a search for um, the particular BAPI that I'm interested in. This one is pulling back all the um, purchase requisition items from the SAP system. Okay, so I'll do a big search for these here. And then we have a couple of um, things here. So one is uh, often uh, with these BAPIs, we need to provide some kind of inputs. So that may be a selection criteria, uh, it may just be a flag to indicate we want to extract data, all right? And what we do is, in this scenario here, I provided a particular criteria that I want to provide to that BAPI. I refine this slightly using the selection tool from Altrix, uh, which means I'm just going to transfer the plant provided by my input file into this particular tool, okay? So if I click on the input parameters, you can see here that we've done a mapping between the field that we want to provide to this particular BAPI. This is the white one here, and you can see there's a drop down value against the input field. Uh, these other fields in red, we haven't done any mapping, so we're not interested in those ones. And then in the table, this is kind of where the output uh, will, be, will be generated and the return messages where often we'll get any error messages, those kind of responses from the SAP system. So what we get raw from the SAP system once we execute the BAPI um, is data that looks a little bit like this, okay? So it's not quite useful to me yet within uh, an Altrix environment, and I could use some of the other Altrix tools uh, to convert this, but what we've actually added already is what we call our SAP BAPI parse tool. And what the BAPI parse tool will do is allow me to identify um, the output table provided by that particular BAPI, okay? Identify the fields uh, that I'd like to have included in my final output. And so basically, it just does all the tidying up for us. And then in the browse tool, I can see the full list of outputs from that particular BAPI there.